Okay, we've got our opening area filled in nicely with roads and respecting road hierarchy to avoid traffic issues. But you'll notice there might be something missing. We've got roads, we've got traffic, we've got a beautiful landscape. I'll give you a hint, it's all the buildings. I suppose the next logical question is where do the buildings belong? How can we place them so they are realistic and functional so we can build a city that looks good but also works great? For that, we're gonna have to use some real life references and look at some maps. Everybody, welcome back to episode two of Cities Player Plans. I am in fact a cities player, if you can believe that, and I do plan to plan ahead in building my city. This episode is all about buildings, but episode one is all about this road layout and the principles of road hierarchy so you can avoid traffic issues in your city. If you haven't already checked that out, feel free to review that first before learning how to add in buildings to your city. With that said, let's get into it. For our first example, I figured we could get a bit of European influence and inspiration. Off the eastern coast of Spain in the Mediterranean, there's an island containing the city of Palma. This one is cool because it has that classic European city center where the star fort came down and made room for an avenue at some point. But the design was largely influenced by pedestrian activity, small winding streets, very high density, uh, some courtyards around, all good stuff built on the water. Something to consider is where, where your city was settled and why it was settled. And this one was certainly a port city on the water. And when the walls came down, it expanded out into the farmland with some high density down to medium density development, encircled by a ring road at some point, probably later, post-automobile development would have started when the city reached about that extent, and then tapering off into lower density, certainly car-centric suburbs out of the way. Another big hallmark that I see in European cities is that the farmland tends to be very close to the city center compared to American cities, because in the US we often have single family homes taking up this space for miles and miles and miles. But I really like what we have here. European city center, mid-density sprawl tapering off into lower density, which will probably one day densify as cities change over time. For our second real life city example, we are gonna travel quite a bit farther east to the city of Dubai. Now this is all a very modern city, so there's not really a walkable city core to speak of, as far as I can tell. Uh, largely built in the last 30 years, you've got all the hallmarks of car-centric planning. Huge roads, huge interchanges, dumping traffic into huge arterial roads off the highway. This actually looks just like Las Vegas to me. Very, very similar. Not very walkable, not really to human scale. Great if you want to get around by car, except for the traffic. Uh, but you wind up with these huge blocks everywhere and kind of a more, I mean, this is supposed to be downtown, I think, and it's a bit more made up than, than say, a historic city core as it lacks the, the history of another place. But yeah, you wind up with tall buildings in the downtown connected entirely by roads. I believe there's a monorail, but the transit is pretty limited overall. A lot of U.S. cities inspired this, I'm sure. This was inspired by many places in the US, but this is just such a prime example, I, I couldn't avoid it. So if you're looking to build a car-centric place with huge roads, Dubai is a great example of that. Those were both rather extreme examples. Now I'd like to go somewhere a bit more balanced in my opinion. Boston, Massachusetts in the USA. So this is an older city in the country, new country, older city. So it, it has a bit of both worlds, and I'd like to kind of go over the anatomy of that with you. This is the old city center, the old uh, city core called the North End, and across the way is also uh, Bunker Hill. So both of these places look a bit like the city core of, um, of our first example, Palma, but also we've got the large downtown element. So this is, this is all much older than Dubai, though much newer than Palma, right? Uh, the downtown has tall buildings, the old town has small, windy, walkable streets, and you've also got the freeway going through the city center, though Boston chose to bury it in the Big Dig, very large infrastructure project uh, that turned the freeway into a park that you can cross to get from the north end back to downtown and Quincy Market and all this stuff. Uh, from there, you've got mid-density, 
sprawling out from the downtown as is typical in the U.S., uh, turning into low density eventually, turning into the single-family homes that we spoke about earlier, uh, for many more miles when compared to Palma before you start seeing farmland scattered throughout the, the landscape. But I think it's great that we do have some older cities here that feature pre-automobile development, along with our post-automobile downtowns and, uh, and a bit of city sprawl for some variety. Be sure to seek inspiration from places that inspire you. Maybe it's somewhere relatable nearby, or maybe it's somewhere you find interesting, but be sure to seek inspiration and then bring it back to the game just like we are now. So what I see is that our starting tile is on a river. So I imagine that our downtown was probably geared for shipping at some point, assuming that this is the downtown, which, which is what I've decided. So I'm gonna focus density here and then we're gonna push outward from there. Another thing to keep in mind as I start zoning this is that I'm absolutely gonna be up zoning as we go. Just like real cities, densification happens over time. So make sure to, to acknowledge that uh, this place you're building is probably going to become denser over time if you centralize in the way that I'm recommending. Uh, I'm just gonna start with row houses there and we'll shoot for lower density across the road here. That's gonna be my dividing line, just so I don't build an entire low density area uh, without, <laughs> and then have to demolish it immediately. I'd rather not do that. So this will be medium density on the waterfront, simulating our downtown, lower density across the way. I've already built in utilities too. So there's water coming in, water outflow, uh, sewage outflow downstream from that. And we're also importing electricity at a tra transformer station. No problems there. The real special case in this scenario, throughout this, I'm going to be highlighting special cases of zoning or special kind of considerations when you're building. And industry is the first one of those. So your industrial zoning relies on, uh, not relies on, but it, pollution is the consideration. So the wind direction, it's blowing this way. If I orient us, if assuming north is up here, south is down here, the wind is blowing northeast right now. Because of that, I've got my industrial area staged here. So special considerations are industrial area wind pollution as well as water pollution. So always build your sewage outflow downstream. <laughs> Same concept, build it downstream from the inflow pipe, assuming you start with this cheap water option. So I'll be expanding here to build industry. Uh, commercial, I really recommend in intermingling everywhere. So your commercial demand will spike once you've built residential. And I'm just going to put a bunch of low density commercial next to our low density residential. And we are going to surround this medium density area with low density commercial. And all of this, I'm not married to any of it. It's all going to be up zoned over time, just like a real city living and breathing. This will be changed but we really want to focus our efforts on this downtown city center area and make sure that they have commercial within walking distance to avoid traffic problems. Uh, let's expand the industrial area and uh, I'll check back in once that's done. So I've just been going with the flow and following the demand meters and just zoning as I go. And right now they are unhappy because they have unreliable health care and what looks like death care coverage. So I'm gonna to opt to add a medical clinic. And I wanna centralize this just as this is the only space we have available right now and we're building centrally to downtown. I'm gonna build this within range of everything we've built thus far, which is really anywhere on the roads, but uh, we gotta pick a spot. So perhaps, perhaps here, just off this, this collector road. So they have access to everywhere all at once within a couple turns, that's fine with me. And we'll also need death care. The cemetery is enormous. Uh, I'm not married to the road layout either. I could knock out a couple, of, a couple of spots here to make room for it, a couple of side streets. But what I'm actually gonna do is go for the crematorium. If you hit the button I on your keyboard, it actually gets rid of that overview, that, that overlay. There we go, just on that little side street seems kind of nice. Now the people are demanding better education. So as I continue zoning, we're gonna stage a, an elementary school and a high school just to keep things moving here. Maybe we'll do this. 
that'll leave room to expand. And the high school, maybe it leans down this way because there's a nice large sort of gridded area. Once again, showcasing, don't, don't be afraid to modify what you've done. That's really the, the name of the game in my opinion. Not everybody's gonna recommend this or play it this way, but especially once the economic simulation kicks in, this is the way to go. Upzoning, densifying, all these things. Uh, we'll have education in, and that will affect the the status, the that'll affect the wealth of our sims, and will also affect demand. So don't forget to educate. If you're concerned with how your demand is looking, change the education distribution in your city to influence your demand. Things are growing very nicely, and we've got several more services to add, but something I want to point out before I add those. Low-density housing has a mechanic called suitability, residential suitability, and you'll notice as places get denser or perhaps louder, they become less suited for low-density housing, and it simply will not grow in these red and orange areas probably more likely to grow in the orange, but it certainly won't grow in, in the red areas. So that is just one more game mechanic that will cause your central business district, your downtown, your city core, your high street, whatever you want to call it, the, the densest part of your starting area is not going to be inhabitable by low density housing for long because of this mechanic. So that really forces you to build outward, outward. We'll get into the economic sim as well in just a minute, but I really wanted to point that out. You got to put your low density housing further from your city core rather than closer. Uh, we've got fire and police now. Similar to our uh, to the medical facility there, I want to put fire and police within range of everything. So just outside the central business district and easily within range of suburbia. So let's give it a, a good position with good access. That's good for fire. And this is fine for police. We'll sacrifice that path. As I've been going, I've also been making new connections in odd places, just as I see fit or modifying the road network. A lot of people really liked this road layout. And it's good. Like, I'm, I'm happy with following the topography. I was really looking closely at the map to, to inspire this. But... The decisions that I've made at the beginning and the decisions that you will make initially don't need to reflect how the city will look in a few minutes. So really, don't don't be married to anything you've done. Uh, it's the same in music. I, I did music for a long time, and sometimes it was to the detriment of a song to keep the part that inspired the song. So it's okay if the, the part that inspired the city initially changes over time and gets modified and adjust. Cities are, are changing things and the strongest ones are able to change and adapt to different circumstances or different requirements, different needs. Uh, so keep that in mind. Be flexible. Here's something that used to get to me. It's this unreliable healthcare coverage, negative one happiness down in the bottom right corner. That is because we're using this medical clinic and it's not a hospital. So ideally, you want a hospital with an emergency room, just like in real life, you'd, you'd probably prefer to be close to a proper hospital rather than just a clinic. The way that I see this is that's, that's exactly what's going on here. Everyone's like, oh, it's a clinic. Um, for some reason, that, that gives unreliable health coverage in terms of happiness. There is a hospital that can be unlocked but I warn you with this, it's only two uh, points. You can unlock it, no problem. The problem is when you place it, you are gonna run out of money so quick. It's actually wild. The upkeep is 775,000 per month versus the medical clinic of 105,000 per month. So one happiness point is really not much. Like that's totally fine. Just, just let that ride. Uh, with all that in mind, don't overbuild any of these things. Everything in this menu, I've been losing money the whole time. You've probably noticed I'm negative three grand per hour trending, but I also have a lot of money in the pool. I keep hitting milestones. No problem there. I'm not really worried about money. Money would become a major concern the second I build the actual hospital. Then we are in trouble. I can't even afford it. So once I've spent that million dollars, that million simoleons, 
then I'm, I'm on the hook for 775,000 a month. That's too much. So just be, be happy. Let your little town be comp content with little services. Later, I'm probably going to recommend deleting these or moving them further out into suburbia in favor of placing a central hospital, just like in a real city where you get a central specialized health clinic, a health situation of some sort. I think that's the best way to approach that in City Skylines 2 as well. Now I've started playing with the economic sim just a little bit, just a little, just, just dipping my toe in, my little toe. So we're doing medium density housing to kind of spark density in certain areas. It's a personal preference on my part to, to not want to group a bunch of towers together. I don't hard zone a bunch of towers right next to each other because they wind up very ugly. I think they look good on their own, maybe surrounded by commercial. And the reason I'm surrounding it with commercial is because this is the economic, the, the customer level, right? So, so this orange means that we've got a mid density customer level, not enough in this area. Like the row houses aren't dense enough to trigger that, but this building will be. Here's another tower going up in our quote unquote dense downtown area that I've not really been densifying very much. <laughs> Don't worry, stick around. It will densify. But yeah, this is a great way to soak up that medium medium density residential and also feed some of your existing businesses or create an area that's wealthy for wealthy with customers at least for a future commercial area. So I'm just dotting the landscape with these towers that'll poke out and start creating a bit of skyline for our city and once again feed those commercial areas. We've got a new special zoning. This one is important to note because it has its own high density residential demand meter. The only way we can fulfill that currently is low rent housing, which is unlocked at the Grand Village level. So low rent housing, large apartment buildings with small affordable apartments, the low rents provide lower tax income as a result. That's all fine, but we have people that wanna move in for cheap. They wanna live here for cheap. With that in mind, the, the two, two or three main things to keep in mind, check land value. That low rent building can't really go into a higher land value area because the, the people who want to live there are going to get priced out. So keep, <laughs> keep it out of this blue area. I'm probably going to put it up maybe on this corner here, just up on the outskirts of everything, but still within range of all the schools and services and everything around as best I can. I'm actually going to change the dimensions to further manipulate the situation here. There we go. Now that one is hopefully far enough outside of the out of the high land value area. Yep, that'll be fine. Cool. It'll be fine for a while. Once again, not married to it. This may change in the future. That's where that's going to go. And it's also a very good idea to add a park within range of it, probably right across the street from it even, as we've just unlocked parks. Reason being, it's going to be hard enough to live in this place as it is, they have a negative nine happiness debuff, negative 16 happiness due to small homes. So it's really important to offset that with everything else. They've got to have good entertainment. The entertainment, I believe, is the park, if I'm not mistaken, that we just added. Healthcare is right next door. Education is just up the street. Leisure time is good. High noise pollution. We'll take the negative one. That's fine. This building, this high density uh, low rent housing is very prone to being abandoned because of that apartment, uh, that small homes debuff, negative 15 happiness. So offset that in every way you can while also keeping it out of the high land value area. That's the best way I've found to keep those buildings alive. At first, you're only going to need one of them. Eventually, we'll have them kind of scattered around the outskirts of this, probably uh, defining the downtown area versus our lower density single family home area. We've also unlocked the office zoning and I've already zoned a few over here, which is fine. I, I don't really have a philosophy with where it goes other than maybe it goes in places where other things would not want to be. So for instance, if you just wanted to zone it up against your arterial, that's totally fine because it's a fairly low traffic thing. So maybe I'll do a like a custom shape here and see how that looks. Yep, I did the same thing over here. So perhaps you don't want commercial on your arterial road, which is totally fine. I, I did that there, but 
that'll disappear or change over time anyway. But maybe you want uh, maybe you want offices on the corner instead. That that type of thing. Um, yeah, you can also intermingle office with with industry, and the amount of office demand versus industry demand will also depend on your education. With that in mind, perhaps we'll unlock the old uh, university or the college first, and then the university. So let's do the college. Let's do the university. I'll find some good spots for those just to continue pushing students through. We've got plenty of college and university eligibility, so let's find spots for those and move ahead. Students are settling in at the college and the university. We're going to grow the city towards those as we move forward. But right now, immediately, we've got mixed-use zoning unlocked, which is great. And we've also got good conditions to build that. So that's a it's a medium-density building on top and commercial on bottom. So what I'm actually going to do is take this entire row of buildings. Sorry, everybody. Remember what I said about upzoning? This is, this is one of those situations where we're going to upzone. I've found that it's really great with mixed use to keep them all similar in size. So I'm choosing to make them four deep and all the way across. We'll see what decides to grow in. If I don't like any of the shapes, I'll delete them. But that looks very balanced to me. And we'll see how that affects medium density residential as well as commercial. It needs to be in a place that's dense enough to support the commercial on bottom. And, uh, you know, th there was already medium density here, so I don't think the residential will have a problem, but we really want to keep it so that there's enough customers in general for the, for the mixed use buildings. In my opinion, that's the best default for downtown. Let your, let your default be mixed use everywhere punctuated by tall skyscrapers. So this is going to get rezoned to medium density row houses in a little while. Uh, also, you can see the, <laughs> here's the suitability, the residential suitability for low density housing. This whole area is going to be the densest part of the city because of that mechanic. It is going to make us do that. Whether I wanted to do medium and high density here or not, low density is no longer an option. It will not grow on these red roads. And we'll see that pushing out further and further as the city grows. I also want to say an, another thing about the city core. This doesn't have to be the only city core. This is just our starting area. So our starting area is a three by three. So nine tiles in total. And that sort of needs to, you got to pick a dense area within that. So that is a city core. And it may be the only one in your city, but you can make it less centralized if you prefer by making another city core up the road with its own interchange or another city core up the road. We'll get into interchanges. Don't worry about that. That's in the future. Transit is in the future. Making the city even bigger, more buildings, no doubt, things like that. I've got big plans for the Cities Player Plans series, not to be confused with City Planner Plays. He's a different person. I'm not trying to cause confusion. I just thought it was a funny joke. Uh, some of you didn't agree. I'm sticking with it. I don't, you know, I, I don't really mind. Uh, but yeah, come back for the next episode. I'm not sure exactly what we'll be covering, but the city is growing nicely, and uh, I think I've given you some ideas to think about in the meantime. Everyone, thanks for hanging out. Feel free to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe. You can join the Discord if you'd like. That's all I've got for today. I'll see you in the next stream or the next video.